Um, recording. Recording. So, as you guys can see, today we're working on our interactive notebook. This should just be the next two pages of your little packets. Um, I know at least one of you doesn't have it still. I was going to give it to you on Thursday last week, and then we didn't have it in person school on Thursday. So, I apologize. You'll have to just kind of write it again, um, which sucks. You should also notice, in case you didn't already, wait, is this the right one? That's weird. It looks like it's missing some stuff. Um, Right here, we have coefficient, and here we have coefficient. Um, obviously, you don't need it twice, so you can kind of just ignore the bottom one. Um, but today is International Women's Day. Apparently, I got a thing from Snapchat saying it is, so. Yeah. Oh, it is. Well, cool, I guess. You. Happy International Women's Day. Then us women, then us women should get the day off of school. Am I right? Or am I right? That's not. That's not how that works. You can't you're really call us against our will here. So you're, you're also not a woman. You're a girl. But that's. Well, okay. And you're not a man. You're a boy. So shut up. I never said I was and a man. I actually have to. Uh, I think it's eighteen. In some cultures, she would be considered a woman. The thing is, is that I'm not 13 yet, so. Uh, if he's recording this, so let's not talk about this. <laughs> it's okay. My last class was talking about murder mysteries during the interactive notebook part. So as long as you're getting your stuff cut out, I really don't care that much. So I finally found my scissors, but I don't have glue or tape. Then th that's sad. That's just sad. I, I do you not I have know. a single glue? I found my scissors, but then I lost my glue on the same day. So right. maybe you, you put it in the same place you found your scissors from. Can you not just like grab another glue stick? That's boring. You always want the fun to try and find. Okay, I'm gonna pause the right out. Um, you'll still have time to glue. We're only going through the first couple, so I will bring this back up at the end of class so you can look at it if you need to. Um, but we are gonna move on to vocab. So these are learning targets. We don't really care about those right now. First vocab word is term, which is a number or the product of a number and a variable. So in this case, we have three terms in this equation. We have the four X, we have the seven, and we have the five. Each one of those is a term, which you can see by this fancy picture that outlines all of it. Whoa, crazy. It's not actually that crazy. I know what we're supposed to write down instead of that. What? We're supposed to write down a number uh, or the product of a number and a fraction, <laughs> not variable, fraction. Okay. Oh boy, we're back out in the hall again. Hey, I will give Thomas a gold star if he actually did his notebook. Or was it for the bad pun about my last name? Okay, are we ready to move on or does somebody need more time? Not to cut things, to write down the vocab word. Hey, Mr. Cleary. Yeah. So I was telling one of my friends from a different school about you. And he said that he was trying to say your name again because he has like a, a weird voice thing where his voice is like weird or something or whatever. I don't know how to pronounce it, but and it sounded like he was saying Mr. Query. I was like, what the? Yeah, my brother had a lisp when he was younger and he used to say that all the time. I got called that on by the football team for like a year. All right. What? No, that's so not, that's not how that works, Thomas. No. 
Next one, constant. Um, this is a term with no variable. So basically it's just a plain number. A plain number is a constant. So in this case, it's just the one. Uh, the four X cubed is not a constant. The two X squared is not a constant. The three X is not a constant, but the one is a constant. Uh, each one of these is a term. So four X cubed is a term, two X squared is a term, three X is a term and one is a term, but one is a constant. And as you'll see with the next definition, uh, these three are all coefficients. What if I disagree with you? Uh, you're allowed to disagree with me because you're allowed to be wrong, but. Mr. Query, are you a Democrat? Uh, I, I don't generally talk about politics during class. It's math class. Why do we why? We're in math class, not social studies, guys. Yeah, Jay, so stop talking. You can talk you just not about talking. social studies. What is my zodiac? I have no idea what my zodiac sign is. I think I'm a monkey. What? No, 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 no. Not a zodiac so, sign. What what oh. month were you born? Oh, I thought we were talking about like the Chinese zodiac, like the calendar oh. thing. No? I'm a rat. Go for it. I'm, I'm a rat, rat too. I'm November twelfth is my birthday. So uh, yeah, Kate, I saw that's that's okay. If you have to leave, then you can just watch the recording. All right, next one. Um, Mr. Clue, you're a Scorpio, up, guys. In the election, coefficient: the number multiplied by a variable. So that's the numbers that come in front. So right here we've got the four. Here we've got the two. Here we got the three. These are the coefficients. So four is our coefficient for x cubed, two is our coefficient for x squared, and three is our coefficient for x. Technically, actually, it should be negative three, but I'm going to leave that alone for right now because it's not important. I, is being a Scorpio a good thing? I don't. That sounds like something that my wife's friends would I talk about. I am a crab. Astrology. For once, I agree with Clarion. What? I am Cancer, which is That's crab, that. which is That's a sea really animal. I don't. This is got... on the recording. I'm a Gemini. This is on the record recording. Okay. Does anybody need more time for coefficient? You say no. Okay. Um, like terms. Is this still a vocab word? Hold on. Let me pull it up. I think it is. Um, so like terms are terms that contain the same variables. It is not. Wait, yes, it is. Sorry, wrong one. This is our last vocab word. Um, like terms, terms that contain the same variables. So here, for instance, all of the A numbers, so 12A, 3A, 54A, these are all like terms. The 5x, the 12x, the 0.9x, these are all uh, like terms. And then the 3xy squared, 9xy squared, and 12xy squared are also all like terms. So these three here. Down in the bottom, we have a whole bunch of different things. We actually talked about this a little bit ago, or a while ago, um, when we were doing the combining like terms day in our back to basics unit, which some of you still haven't finished, by the way. Um, and so you guys already have a little bit of experience with this, but we're going to look at it in more detail later this week. Okay. Do we need more time or are we good? I think we're good. I mean, I'm not good, but I'm a good kid sometimes. Okay. So um, this is not actually one of your vocabulary words. I think it's written down for you already. No, it's not. I don't know why this is here, um, but this is important. This is a thing that we will be talking about. Um, so simplifying an expression, this is actually what we're going to be working with a lot during this unit. Um, and it means to write an expression so that there are no parentheses and all like terms have been combined. 
So what that means is, and we'll look at this in a little bit more detail in just a little bit, um, but like for here, we have 2A, B, or 2A plus 2B plus 1 half B squared plus 2A plus 3B. Um, we combine all of these together into this. This is the simplified version of this expression. So we can't do anything else to simplify this, but with this one, we can distribute this two. Um, we can distribute this two. We can combine our like terms. And all of that, when we finish it, we get 4a plus 10b plus 1 half b squared. I don't expect you all to know what to do from right there. That's not really um, what we need to know right now. But what you need to know is that simplifying an expression basically takes it from this big form where there's a whole lot of stuff going on to as short as it can possibly be. OK? Equivalent expressions. So these are expressions which represent the same algebraic expression. That's a lot of different ways of using the word expression to define the word expression. But really what this means is that you have some uh, initial expression. Like for instance, in this case, we have 4x minus 2x plus 20. The simplified version is just 2x plus 20. But these are the same thing. Guys, we don't need to argue about astrology in, in the chat. It's OK. Not important. OK, let's move on to what we actually need to learn about today. So this is actually important. I need everybody to focus up and listen. Um, I don't expect that looking at the slide, it makes any sense right now. Um, you'd have to be pretty good at math to actually know what we're doing here. Wait, these weren't things you needed to write down, I don't think. Were they? I don't have those in my vocab list. Do you guys? OK. So the distributive property is something that's really important. Um, basically, if you have a number or letter outside of a parentheses like this, what you have to do in order to multiply this out, because something moved up against a multiplication sign or a parentheses is always multiplication. So you need to multiply the A by everything inside. So we're going to do A times B plus A times C. So as you can see right here, we took this A, we distributed it to the B, that gives us A times B, and then we distributed it to the C, that gives us A times C. We still have our plus in the middle, and we've just multiplied everything by A. And then we can simplify this down just by getting rid of the parentheses. In this case, we'd have AB plus AC. Same thing applies with the minus. Um, you have A, you're going to uh, bring it out to both the B and the C. So we'll have AB, this time we have a minus, so minus AC. Same basic idea right here. Okay. Now, before we get into the questions on this, I actually forgot I should probably be doing this. We're going to do this this way. Um, I forgot the PowerPoint is not animated again. Don't know why it always does this. It's always animated on my normal computer, and then I put it on the one I'm using for class, and it doesn't have the animations anymore. So the first example problem is 7 times x plus 8. Now, I'm going to go over this one kind of step by step just to show you guys. Um, but I want you to be able to pay attention because on the next one, I'm going to have you tell me what the steps are. So first thing we need to do is take our 7 and distribute it to both parts of the inside or both things that are inside the parentheses. So we're going to rewrite this as 7 times x plus 7 times 8. 7 times x, we can simplify to just 7x. Plus 7 times 8, can anybody tell me what 7 times 8 is? Cool, Thomas, then it should be pretty easy. What's 7 times 8? Yep, 56. So this is our final answer for this one right here. We have 7x plus 56. All right, I'll give you guys a chance to write this one down. This actually is in your PowerPoint. I just wanted to write it this way so that you guys can see all the answers right off the beginning. So make sure you've got this one going. I'm going to put the next one up. So it's going to be 
negative three times y minus two. Now, this problem over here is a little bit different and it has something really important to keep track of. This is something that destroyed my eighth graders on the test earlier this year. Um, so it is something that is very important to pay attention to. If you have a negative number outside of the parentheses, you have to multiply the whole thing by everything inside. So we're gonna have a negative three getting distributed to the Y and a negative three getting distributed to the two. The reason this makes a difference is if we multiply this out, we have negative three times Y, then we have minus negative three times two. So what's negative three times Y? Can anybody tell me? Negative Y? Close. It is negative. There is a Y. Yeah, it's gonna be negative three Y. Oh, sorry, Enrique put it in private chat. Oh, cause I turned everybody's to private chat. So we have negative three Y minus, now what's negative three times six, or two? I said it out loud. Negative three times two. Jackson, we're almost done. We've got one more problem after this. If you have to leave, it's okay. Just watch the notes later. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be negative six. This leaves us with negative three Y minus negative six. Minus negative six is effectively the same thing as plus six. So we're gonna say negative three Y plus six. This is gonna be our final answer. Now, in red, I'm gonna show you what happens if you just distribute the three. So we have our negative out here. Oops, hold on, let me redo this. I'm gonna erase this first one because you guys should be done with this. So we have negative three times y minus two. If we just distribute the three, what we end up getting is negative three y, and then we have three times two, which is six, so we'd have a minus six. These two things are obviously different. This is a minus symbol, this is a plus symbol. This one right here is the correct one. The one I did in red is wrong. So make sure when you distribute with a negative, you're distributing the negative to everything as well. All right, last one. Hopefully everybody was done with that. If not, I can pull it back up in a second. Um, the last one, we have a fraction. So it should be 1 half times 4x minus 3. 1 half times 4x minus 3. We're just gonna do the exact same thing we did before. We're gonna take this, we're gonna distribute it to both parts. So we have one half times four X, put this in parentheses, minus one half times three. One half times four X is just four divided by two. So two X minus, and then one half times three should be three halves. We can rewrite that as a mixed number. So you're two X minus one and one half, like that. Okay. This is the last of the notes that we're gonna to take today. But uh, before I let you go, I have one question that I want all of you to try to solve before you take off. Um, so, Let's say I have four times three X plus seven. I want you guys to distribute this and tell me what the final expression would look like. Uh, nope, Dylan, that is... Remember you're distributing. Enrique, that is correct. That's why I have it up, Andy. We're gonna talk about it. Colby, that is correct. Barb, that is correct.
So Andy, you're going to take the number that's outside the parentheses, which in this case is a four, and you're going to multiply it by the two different things that are inside the parentheses. This is recorded. Guys, remember there's a three X right here. You can't combine the X and the seven. Right, Jackson, but you can simplify that last bit. Not quite, Grayson. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'll go through this step by step. No, we're gonna take our I four. No. Okay, then finish it. It's fine. Uh, okay, I'll give you another thirty seconds. How about? Correct, Jackson. Uh, nope, Grayson. Hold on a minute. Do you want the answer to be a number or an equation? Because I have the equation. It should be an expression. You can't okay. get a number. If you get just one number, then you did something wrong. Good, Terry. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this four. We're going to multiply it by both of the terms that are in here. So we have four times three X. Then we have our plus four times seven. Four times three X is 12 X plus, and then four times seven is 28. This is it. This is as far as we can go with this. We can't combine these any further. A lot of people had like 40 or 40 X. Can't do that. Remember, we can only combine like terms. This 12 X right here, this is a number with a variable at the end. 28, this is just a number. This is a constant. We can't add a constant and something with a variable together, so we end up getting 12x plus 28. Um, really quick, one more to make sure that everybody's got it. Solve this one. If you get this one right, you can take off. Also, quick reminder, uh, this is the last week that you guys can be turning in stuff from before the expressions unit. A lot of you have not done the test that I reassigned. So please, if you're not passing the class right now, look into those, make sure you get it done. Um, Enrique, Jackson, and Andy, those are all correct. Uh, Colby, you didn't multiply the last part by three. Is that correct, Larry? Uh, I just sent you a chat, Grayson. There you go, Colby. That's right. I guess I can stop recording now.